for anyone in any part of the world that think the United States going is going there to help and protect people in Taiwan, and to anyone in Taiwan think the United States is your friend, think twice. Take a look at what happened to those people who the United States used to call friend. There's an article I want to share with you, and because uh, because this basically reveals the true intention. This is the article on The Hill, U.S. media, right? Article is called "America Must Prepare for War with China Over Taiwan." They're openly calling for war. This paragraph: Taiwan is of vital geopolitical importance to the United States. And here, Taiwan is the cork in the bottle for Japan. Whoever controls Taiwan will control Japan and the Republic of Korea's shipping lifeline. Chinese control of Taiwan will give it enormous influence over both Japan and Korea, fundamentally altering the strategic calculus in East Asia. They write their intentions <laughs> publicly, but they're saying they worry China if、uh, have full control, have reunifications with Taiwan. China will control Japan and the and South Korea. That means they are trying to do this. They try to control Taiwan, so their allies, South Korea and Japan, can join United States to contain China.、Uh, th this again, this is projection. They're they're worried about what China will do if it controls Taiwan, which again it already does, and the the Strait of Taiwan already does.、Uh, this is all about the the United States and its desire to control shipping and and、uh, the sea lanes and everything else in the entire region.、Uh, who? Who is China trading with? I mean, who does Japan and South Korea trade with? Their, their largest trade partner is China. So,、uh, why would China disrupt sea lanes that its own trade depends on? This is projection. This is what the U.S. wants to do to encircle and contain China. And they've written policy papers about how they will target maritime shipping,、uh, how they could close down straits. They've reconfigured the U.S. Marine Corps. Specifically for this task, they got rid of all of their tanks. They have these long-range、uh, rocket systems now. They're supposed to、uh, jump from one island to the other, be able to temporarily close straits, and and it's all about stopping commerce. And who benefits from the commerce? Not just China, but also Japan, also South Korea, and、uh, just just as you say, and just look at it. The U.S. has tens of thousands of troops in Japan and South Korea. This is to subordinate both of those nations to. U.S. foreign policy objectives. They want to do the same to China. It's about controlling the entire region, not just China. When you read an article like this, oh, what if what if China does this or that? Oh, China is threatening tr trade in the region. It's their trade. Why would they threaten it? It it makes no sense. When you understand that, you can see right through this. But but they know when they're writing this, so many more people will not see through it. I want to point out that the U.S. ruling class was was. Divided on how to deal with Taiwan after、um, 1949, and the consensus was not reached until the Korean War broke out. And、um, MacArthur pointed out that that Taiwan was nearest of all places to both Okinawa and the Philippines, which are under U.S. control. Which means they saw Taiwan as nothing but the perfect, you know, natural aircraft carrier that can't be sunk. So. MacArthur、um, argued that if Taiwan were lost to the communists, then it, it would create、um, a comprehensive、um, so-called defense network would be broken. But this defense network that the U.S. speaks of is really an aggression network. And I also want to point out because I、um, I feel like we don't have too much time left that、um, the first country to ever attack Taiwan with a warship was the U.S. in 1867. And the country that supported Japan in invading Taiwan during the Mudan incident. Was the United States in 1874? The country that sold weapons to Japan during the First Sino-Japanese War, leading to China's defeat, forcing China to cede Taiwan to Japan, was the U.S. from 1894 to 1895. The country that actively pushes for Japanese containment of China is the United States, from the 19th century until today. So, can we really say that the United States is our friend? I mean, we're being used to serve U.S. imperialist interests, but they're still there. But they're making us pay for, just pay so much money for weapons that aren't even effective in、um, protecting ourselves if war broke out with the mainland, and、um, 
you know, some quote Tsai Ing-wen from that interview she did, I believe, with CNN a few years back that said, in an event of war with mainland China, Taiwan can defend itself from the first wave, after which the international community will join in. But this cannot be further from the truth because nowhere in the Taiwan Relations Act does the U.S. state its obligation to defend Taiwan in the event of war. It simply states that efforts to determine Taiwan's status by non-peaceful means are matters of grave concern. Matters of grave concern can just mean, you know, um, Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden going on TV making a stern comment. And the U.S. lawmakers are keenly aware of this lack of commitment because um, former Illinois Senator um, Charles Percy proposed changing the words grave concern in, in the act to security interest. But this was vetoed because it would commit the U.S. to war with China should cross-strait antagonisms intensify. So, and the senior Pentagon official Edward Ross at the time said, as the lone superpower, our interests are plentiful and our attention short. We cannot help defend you if you cannot defend yourself. So the U.S. has not just recently shown signs that it's not going to come in and defend Taiwan should war break out. It's shown this this whole time. It's also shown throughout um, over the course of um, you know the last century, more than that, that it does not care about the people on Taiwan. It doesn't. It, the United States isn't our friend. It's the friend of um, certain um, beneficiaries of like of this sort of arrangement. You know, the small segments of the ruling elite, but nobody else in Taiwan. Absolutely. And just think about it. The whole reason they're in this situation in the first place is because the U.S. Uh, sold them out to, to reestablish ties with, with the mainland. The U.S. wanted to, to use those, those new reestablished ties to reassert itself over China. When that didn't work, they went back to Taiwan as, as their last card in their hand. And and now you know you see the whole process start over, and they're 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 right back to using Taiwan as a battering ram against the mainland. It, it's very sad. It's sad to see, and this is why they pick young people because older people w- wouldn't fall for this. This is why they this is why they pick young people here in Thailand and in neighboring countries. They're the only ones that will buy into this. When in reality, if you just take a few minutes and think, you use logic and reason, you will see that it is a formula to burn your country to the ground. Uh, and and at the end of the day, it will be, re- just like you said, it will be reunified one way or the other. Just mm-hmm. just pick which way you want to, to do it, peacefully or as a, a, in violence as a battering ram for the U.S. who is simply using you. Peacefully with dignity. That's what people exactly. don't get. Peaceful reunification is the dignified way of reunification. And it's the it's the form of reunification where both sides can sit down and talk conditions. I think um, these recent events show us that so-called Taiwan separatism is not true independence, but it further it, it further um, embroils Taiwan into um, serving U.S. imperialist interests. I believe independence means independence from true independence means independence from this sort of hegemonic unequal relationship where you don't even have dignity as a human being and i do not think and i think this sort of independence can only be achieved through peaceful reunification with the rest of china where we are equal citizens with equal rights and we actually have our voices heard as equal citizens and not subjects of empire